What the uh, fuck? Holy cow! <laughs> now we're gonna be pouring a little bit of bourbon right on top. Wow. A little bit of bourbon and fire makes everything better, right? Wow. Jesus, I've been spanked with paddles smaller than that. Because this guy, like, he's so awesome. One minute, and then the next minute with a drink, he would be like a belligerent, like, jealous. Cool. He literally could turn on me like this. Would you say that because you were on the show? Exactly. You had a lot more love interest. The oh, fame has- 100%. Way more. Like, I was shocked, like, how much more. I was like, I knew famous people got more options, but I didn't realize how much more. It was like insane. I grew a resentment, but I realized these people are not smarter than us. They're actually probably not as smart. They just got lucky, man. You know, like they have rich families. Yeah. If you get success way too early and easily, you don't appreciate it. They don't appreciate their cars or their wealth anyway, because they've had it since they were kids. Yeah. So I don't think there's any happiness for a lot of them. That's why you see a lot of them depressed, living by themselves, lonely, yeah. you know, like having, they gotta be on a reality show half the time, you know? Oh, I just already ate it. What was I supposed to do? Something? Okay. Um, so the last sushi, we do recommend to try with the little. Today we have an incredible guest with us, the man, the legend, Kevin Kreider. Uh, you might know him from Bling Empire, and some of you might know him from Sans. Today we're talking about life, about experiences, about upbringings. For those of you that don't know Kevin, which you will do, uh, he's a model, he's an entrepreneur, actor, reality TV star. Uh, motivational speaker. Am I missing anything? I think we have some food coming. Hope we're hungry. We got the chef Shin Thompson here. What is this? So we have a Creole uh, dish here. So the first one on your left. Cheers, dude. Cheers, cheers. Very good. For those that are unfamiliar with Sans, let's uh, you know give a little background introduction for someone sure, that's watching. Sure. So, so I created this beverage Sans to empower and normalize sobriety, and it's based off of my sober story of seven years, just feeling awful about being sober because I didn't think it was cool, fun, or sexy. I thought it was like what losers did. But then when I got sober, I realized some of the most fun, inspiring people are sober. Yeah. It's just that it's portrayed a different way. Kind of like being Asian, right? Yeah. Asians were portrayed a certain way. Of course it wasn't sexy or fun to be cool, be yeah. Asians. Yeah. You know, we were looked down upon. Same thing with people who are sober or in recovery. Yeah. Nobody saw the fun, cool side about being sober. Yeah. So I wanted to showcase that in my brand and to empower people to get sober if they want to. Or if they don't want to drink that day, don't feel like they have to be pressured to. Yeah. You use the word addiction, right? How do you define that? And how did you get into a space where you feel like this has, drinking alcohol has negatively been impacting my life? Yeah. Well, so I think addiction is anything that's an obsession of the mind that you can't control and makes your life worse. It becomes unmanageable. Like, for instance, like, you might have an obsession about becoming a great restaurant owner or spreading Asian culture in America, right? Because it seems like you're bringing, you know, the East to the West, which is wonderful. But if it gets to a point where it's destroying your relationships, your friendships, your life, you, you become unhealthy. Maybe you have to be hospitalized because you're just overworking all the time. That's an addiction. That's probably something you should get help with. Life becomes unmanageable. You feel irritable all the time, angst, depressed, anxious, angry, whatever. When did you start, you know, drinking your first sip of alcohol to, this is the day I'm gonna stop drinking? My first drink was a beer. Oh shit, that's not right. It wasn't a beer, it was, it was like whiskey. And I thought I didn't like it. But when the whiskey started to feel good, I was like, oh, I forgot that I was Asian, you know? Like, because all the kids around me were white and like, they wanted me to drink with them and have fun. I could crack jokes. I could be self-hating even back then, you know? Like, did a lot of self-hating things, but I loved whiskey because it got me drunk fast. 
And then I still remember to this day, it's December 13th, Eagles game, two glasses of wine. And I just said, this is enough. Like it was, it was just because I felt like I tried to stop so many times. I thought I could control my anger. I thought I could control my emotions. I thought I could control <clears throat> even drinking normally. And I couldn't. Um, my girlfriend was like, you're an asshole, you know, all the time. And I just destroyed my life. A lot of times relationships were hurt, friendships were hurt, uh, career was hurt. And I just remember that day, I was like, it's enough. Wow, seven, seven and a half years ago. Sorry, and I think I ate all of this. No, please, please. I eat this all the time. So. I was going to say, you probably are yeah. sick of this now. Huh? By the way, I love the tagline, be part of the buzz. Without the booze. I love it. It's so good. Who created that? Who I thought did. of that. That's amazing. I, I love it. I mean, I'm, I'm very impressed by the transformation from heavy alcohol to completely sober. You know, that drastic change is, is crazy. And, and you've seen life just completely change as well uh, on that. So what advice would you have for someone struggling to break some type of cycle of addiction and dependency? How did you do it? Because it's not easy. Well, I think some, you got to find somebody that you would, in the AA, at least they say like, hey, find somebody who has what you want. And what they mean is not physical stuff. Like I might look at David and be like, hey, David, sick haircut, smooth skin. I want what you got. That's not what I mean. I mean like, what is their life story? What's their experience? Do they have the knowledge and life experience to help you out? And is their life and the person they are morally, physically, whatever, the person that you want to become? Listen to what they do. If it inspires you, do what they do. And then make up your own shit afterwards, right? Yeah. Um, but you got to follow a certain path that someone's led for you. And then you got to figure out what works and what doesn't. So for me, 12 steps work. It might not work for everybody. Yeah. It might not. Yeah. But it does for me. Since we're talking about signs, let me know a little bit about the challenges of the business. I love to hear about that. Uh, what's been great. I know you I say you won the competition. And how has the life of being an entrepreneur like? I think what's been great is ownership of something. And it's your creation. And when the first time somebody actually drank it and enjoyed it was like, you'll, there's no moment like that ever again, right? First time seeing a stack full of your creation come into the warehouse, nothing like that. First time an investor puts a check into your account, nothing like that. My girlfriend Absolutely. was there for it. Yeah. I mean, it was wonderful. Like, literally, there's nothing like that. Now, the honeymoon phase is over. And now investment's not as easy, especially in this economic time. Disputes between other companies or even internally. It's like you never realize how much of a target you can be once you own a business. Yeah. Um, how to be careful with things. How to deal with lawyers now. Like I didn't realize a lot of business is law. Yeah. You know, I thought it was like, hey, make cool shit and sell it. And then, you know, right. but it's like, oh, well, you got to deal with like permits, contracts. You can't just move, you know, uh, people, you know, like right now, my, my, my time is limited, but at the same time, I'm trying to open up more time. So I hire people. Yeah. Delegation. Delegation. Not owning, not, not having a salary sucks. Right. Yeah. So yeah. even though I'm putting all this sweat equity in to not have anything to help me to get through these times, except for social media posts or some of my acting stuff is all I have. Yeah, you're all in. I'm all what in. Is. I'm plus by the way, the acting stuff helps my beverage. Yeah. I'm the founder. I'm it's the a win win. It's a win win. So if we're talking about the business a little bit, is this is this how can someone get this if they're is mostly your business on, on retail or is this you go to businesses and sell B2B? Right now it's mostly online. We're just started doing B2B right now. So we actually um are gonna be in like Netflix's uh, in their corporate offices, which isn't the sexiest thing I know, but it's kind of cool because this is from Netflix. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's a show I'm on. Um, then also direct to consumer is really the main thing, but we're also on Amazon, but we're also in some selective retail. The next goal is Whole Foods. Yeah. Um, amazing. But we are in some retail stores right now. What's the uh, largest revenue out of these different sectors? Are mostly from re like online or mostly from direct businesses? to consumer? Direct to consumer. We're really trying to stray away from that though to try to really go 
all in on more retail, but that takes a lot of money retail. Uh, direct to consumer does too, but it's a lot less. I mean, there are some headaches though. I mean, like seriously, like sometimes I feel overwhelmed. Um, there's times that like I literally go on my rooftop, a beautiful rooftop with a beautiful sunset on a beautiful couch alone. And I'll just cry because I'm like, fuck, nobody tells you how hard this is going to be. And not only that, but it's like how uncertain, you know, or how things don't, they rarely go your way. Even. Always, never. Yeah. You're, you're constantly just figuring out problems. Packaging, solutions, <laughs> no, invoices. Right. People, internal team members, vendors, money. clients. Yeah. yeah, everything. All and clients. It, it sounds easy when you when you, when we speak about it, but when you're doing it, yeah, my God, and the pressure, yeah, the pressures of success, right? It's just it's it's crazy. So that's why I would say like, better have a good physical health yeah. before you get into it because it will deteriorate a little bit. Yeah, it takes some sacrifice. Yes. It's a lifestyle. It's no longer a job. So would would you say acting? Let's say doing the Bling Empire show is harder, more difficult, or Sans is more difficult. Sans is ten times more difficult than Bling Empire because Bling Empire, I just show up and be myself. But I would say some people think that's hard because they're like, "Oh, where's the script? People t- tell you what to do." Yeah, nobody tells you what to do. I find freedom in that. Yeah, I don't find having your own company that much freedom anymore you know it's it's the opposite that's what i talk about people think being entrepreneur passive income all this stuff people talk about online and i say there's no one no entrepreneur i know that's not putting 80 hours a week yeah working more than 40 hours a week it's to build their brand build their restaurant so i'm telling you it's really it's really a lot tougher than i thought it would be yeah and i don't even have a brick and mortar store like if i had a restaurant i would give up acting i'd have to (laughs) There's not enough time. Yeah. Uh-huh. Where do you see where Sans will be in the next couple of years? Mm. To be real, I um, even though I'm the CEO and founder of this, um, I really hope in a couple of years that raise enough money, we get enough flavors. We only have one flavor so far that somebody can come in and really run this. Like yeah. what I mean, run this is like take it to the next level. Um, that has experience with running a beverage brand. Exactly. Because they see potential and they see like we're doing well, but I want somebody to take it from well to like exceptional. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And that's in every store that you can purchase. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And every recovery meeting, you know, yeah. and every restaurant. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's where I'd love to take it. And that's me stepping away a little bit, you know? Yeah. But I think it's for the better good at that time. Finding that person is challenging as well. Exactly. You guys are, how many restaurants are you guys in now, Prasans? Uh, in, in brick and mortar locations. Where can people get it? Is it mostly in California? Stuff? Mostly in California. I would say we're probably only in about 12 restaurants right now. Yeah. Um, but retail stores were in like 12 as well. So, yeah. But it's, you know, we try to do experiments in, just in California though, because like I think if we just stay in California, that'll be enough. Like we've tried or played with the idea of going to New York. And I'm like, it's just gonna, it's gonna be really tough. Yeah. I mean, there's no way I can go back and forth. I don't know how you do it. Yeah. Yeah. Travel is tough. More hair loss. <laughs> Wait, you do lose hair, don't you? In this I feel like these couple of days, probably these two, three years. I mean, I don't know if it's the aging, but it's like I feel like, you know, the the as you take on more, you will lose some hair for the work. I, I'm feeling that, man. Like, I feel like my hair has been thinner and yeah. shit. Like, it's weird. From the work, I'm telling you, it's crazy. It's crazy how our body reacts to stress, the cortisol level. I definitely think so, yeah. Whenever I work, whenever I go on a vacation, for, if I have the opportunity to go on a vacation for two weeks and not touch work, you feel your hair gets thicker. That's why I need somebody to come in as the CEO to take this away so I can get my hair back and shit so I can start acting again, you know? No, you look great. You look great. Ah, man, it's hard though. It is. Nobody told me you'd lose sleep a lot too. Yeah. I mean, like last night, went to bed at 12, got up at four. Just like anxious. Yeah. On the list of things that you got to take care of. 100%. Yeah. Or like, oh my God, I'm losing opportunity. What am I doing? You know, like, I shouldn't be sleeping right now. All this shit, you know? Yeah. It's really bizarre. Because now it's not like I'm done with the shoot. I'm done with this. Call it a day. And the list never ends. Or if it does, the next day you realize, oh, shit, it wasn't over. <laughs> <laughs> or you're not doing enough. Right. Yeah. Like, I literally, if there isn't anything to do the next day, I'm like, I'm not doing enough. Like, yeah. what am I? I'm going to waste my day. Yeah. Like, 
wasting a day means my beverage can't grow. Yeah. It means uh, I'm not getting out there in front yeah. of the public. Yeah. Do you have pressure from investors? No, you know, the great thing about my investors, and I got to tell you, it's like friends and family. We haven't gone through the VC route at all, but no pressure. They're just like, I also email every one of them once a week. Just yeah, updating updates. them on That's things. great. So I think that keeps the pressure off because they know what's going on. Yeah. Um, they know where they can help out or I'll ask for it, you know. Um, but right now it's like they're, they're like no, no stress with them. Yeah. But the stress comes from knowing it's their money. Yeah. And I, I need to spend it wisely. Yeah. You know, and the last thing I want to do is not have any return from them or at least break even at this point, you know, yeah. like yeah. something. So, yeah. Yeah, I don't know how you deal with investors because you have you have more than angel investors, right? We got. I think the interesting for us, we have investors, different investors in different locations, and I can just know the difference between a good investor and one that's not good will completely make or break the business. So you choose one wrong person to invest, they give you headache. What's a bad audit. investor? Tell me. For us, it will be like someone that has no understanding of the restaurant industry or have expect unrealistic expectations. We have investors that are like, hey, your profit margin is not that great. I want you to use lower food cost. Like, why are you not generating more profit? Um, so you, you, they, you've already had this. Oh, wait, we have. Wow. I mean, in my life, though, I've gone th- in Philadelphia, I've gone through some dark, dark path of like bad investors. I'm not talking about like just legal side. We're talking about taking money from the wrong people and, and having threats. I'm like, hey. You know, why are you guys not making money and all this stuff when we're just at one location? That type of stress is not, you know, that's uncomparable to the stress I have now, which is just managing expectations and stuff. But those days is like life or death. Right. And I'm, I'm in school and I'm like, what am I doing with this? Uh, my parents are not trying to get me in the restaurant space. Right. So uh, it, was, it was pretty crazy to, to also be in a space where landlords don't want to host Asian restaurants. Now it's the thing. Which I, to me, like yesterday seeing the Oscar, like, hey, it's changing. Yeah. Um, now where landlords want it, want us in their space. They're paying us TI to get Asian concepts like Nico X, like Xpot into their spaces. You know, that's they, they want Asian founders and that's what I'm hoping to see is, right. uh, right. we get in that direction. Yeah. Dude, it's so, it's such a weird thing too, because for, for investors, we're about, we're looking into going the VC route, but that's yeah. where even my teammates are like, okay, this is kind of where you step away for a little bit. You know, they'll deal with the VCs for a little bit because I'm not lingoed with it. You know, like a lot of my friends are like, Hey, I believe in you. Here's some money. Go yeah. make it happen. Yeah. You know, a lot of like new friends who are even institutional investors. Yeah. They'll put their own money in and be like, Hey, look, however I can help you out, go do your thing. Yeah. Oh, what's this? Some soup. Oh. Oh god. Yeah, we cooked these for like fourteen hours. So staff come in at like four a.m. Yeah, it's crazy. I will come in the restaurant at four, and people are already working daily. It's daily. Yeah, like four, five, like six a.m. There's so two this people restaurant prepared. has to be open pretty much twenty four seven. Yeah, just different amount of staff. So it's 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 crazy to support something like this to create a Michelin style. Restaurant and most restu- Michelin restaurants are not profitable. You know, They're it's not just like, yeah, a lot of Michelin restaurants are not because the amount of staff you need is not like a, like a money machine versus like our other concepts. That's just better as a business financially. How do you become profitable then as a Michelin star? You open up more? You, you know, you see that also Michelin star, you don't open up more. Maybe once you have this chef, you can create other concepts, uh, that are more profitable. That's less, you know, because the, the standard for Michelin is like the soup that you can't have any issues. The service got to be pristine. You have three servers here today to help uh, us. The chef comes out, right? You fly ingredients from everywhere around the world. It's hard, hard to be profitable for that. So for us, because we have like our own Wagyu ranch, uh, imagine you have your own can production right. company. It right, will right. help you significantly. You have your own packaging company. So by having all that, we're able to generate profit while operating a Michelin style restaurant. But in general, usually it's very challenging. How many team members do you have and what are the different roles? Um, I'm the only full time. We have some part time that does ops, uh, somebody who assists in the marketing and then CFO, president, then an attorney that pay for hire. But it's really it. 
some interns. Yeah. Interns really help a lot. Yeah. You know? Very lean. Right. It's so lean. That's, That's it. Good. And only one person get two people get paid, the lawyer and the ops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you, it. you think you pay them based on success? No. I don't pay them on success. Uh, I pay them because it's necessary right now to free up my time. Gotcha, gotcha. So we can do other stuff right now. Yeah. No. I think it's always good at early stage to have partners, like the first 10 team members. 100%. To base their pay on like success. 100%. Like your, your metrics, right? How many like you've sold and how many restaurants you put in. Once you put in 10, here's a check, right? I mean, that'd be great. Right now, we're just kind of figuring out everything, you know, like. If it were up to me, I'd be operator full time. Yeah. I'd still have enough time for that. Curious sure. to see about the acting world. Would you recommend someone to move out to LA if they're starting out to be an actor and, and to be in the, the Hollywood world? They have to move to LA. Nowadays, I would say don't do it unless you have momentum, some traction. Uh, it can be through social media. It could be already booking a manager. And by the way, a good manager. I don't mean like just some cookie cutter manager off of the street no one's ever heard of, you know, like top 10 agency manager. How, how do you, yeah, how do you differentiate that? Well, how does someone it. tell? You can, okay. you can tell, you can kind of Google or ChatGPT what the top 10, 10 is these days. I'm, I'm still shocked to hear people have management or, or uh, agents and like, they're like, what? Like, I'm not, no one's ever heard of them, you know? I, I just don't. I think the competition is too great now that I think you need to have something going before you actually do it. That's kind of what happened with me. I had something going before that. You know, I was doing TED Talks, having to post videos. Before you came to before LA. Before I came to LA. But yeah. that's also how my friends and producers found me. Yeah. Whoa. Yes, you do. Yeah, I think the acting world is not for everybody. Like, look, when you really look at it, even with very low competition for Asian Americans, it was super tough. Even though there's more roles now, it's still really tough, even with more stuff coming out. I think if, A, the actor is willing to produce and make their own stuff and hustle and be an actor. You have to produce their own stuff. Yeah, that's what I have to do. And I have a hit show. And I'm still having to do that. What is the... What is the process like? Like, run me down the process. Well, how, what do you mean you're a producer? Do you just like create the show? It's like running a business, then you go raise capital for, the bu for this show's budget? There's many ways you can be a producer, but one is first going from the beginning to the end. So the beginning is what's the script? What's the format? Is it good? Work with a writer or write it yourself. And then so you would go find writers? Now I do, but like literally, do you before, compensate the writers, or I'm, I'm curious about how that well works. Uh, it depends how good of a writer you want. You okay. Uh, probably five years ago, there's more writers that were available to do it on spec, which means it was free. Yeah. Now it's like they want to get paid. I see. Uh, you know, with streaming and all of this, that they don't get royalties anymore. It's much harder to survive as a writer. Wow. Uh, so I'd so writers don't get royalties. Not anymore because of streaming, they only do buyouts. So movies, they get they get royalties and stuff. But I would say that um, being a being an actor now, yeah, produce unless you're extraordinarily talented, you know, and you get lucky. By the way, there's almost no way you can really do it unless you produce your own stuff. Even if it's social con social content, by the way, like produce your own content on TikTok or Instagram yeah. or YouTube, just so you can get noticed. Yeah, so that's the way now. It's that not that really is a way. Yeah. I'm not too sure if it's the way, but yeah. it definitely is a way, and I've seen people do it that way. Yeah. I mean, I, technically I am, but nowadays I still have to be a producer and find really good scripts. Like, like I said, I'm working on 12 or 14 projects right now, like just trying to act in them. Yeah. Because the last time I got an audition was six weeks ago. So you're just producing your own shows. Shows, shorts, full features, everything, so I can hopefully act in it. Wow! Yeah. So you're you're in the process of creating these yeah. scripts, and then where then after that you submit it to like uh, to Netflix or something, and and they will. Well, no, I mean first you got to know people that actually make those decisions. Yeah, yeah. but it's uh, the more traditional route route now is to fundraise, 
or find people who just believe in your projects, you know? Try to shoot a short film for like 5K, 50K. Try to shoot like a full feature for 250K to 500K. Like, yeah, it's a process, man. But the thing is about producing, I'm glad you're asking. There's no one way to do it. Like every way I just told you is a way to do it. Wow. But that's where you have to find a way. Just anyway, so some people have 14 different projects that are going yep. through different ways. Some Rest people did some. Kickstarter, some people just do a financy, some people do like pitching it, some people find other productions. It's so many different ways, you know, but it's who are your resources? Yeah. If you don't have many resources or people around, the only way to do it is just to write it and hope somebody likes it, you know? Yeah. But once you have the resources, yeah you have more options. Yeah. Okay. Right now I have a little bit more options. Yeah. You know, but that's so why I say it's, it's almost impossible now at this point. Yeah. So are, are those 14 projects you're already acting in them or they're no, like, uh, probably like uh, six of them that I'd act in. Yeah. But like, I take a look at this, like I'll be lucky if six, one of them, I'll be lucky if two of them get made. Wow. Okay. So they're not made yet. No. I'm not even so do you close. usually shoot a pilot or something and then, it's Send many it different ways. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you just go in the room, pitch it, or create a deck. You know, so many different ways to do it. Yeah, that's super challenging. It's crazy it's to think that. almost impossible. Wow. And like, let's just say I'm lucky to have two projects that should go. I'm lucky if one of them even makes it to the screen or gets on TV. Lucky, you know? Maybe this is a good time to bring in Devon because we're working on yeah. production company. Let's do it. Together. Yeah. Hey, babe. She's my girlfriend. Surprise. Yes. Devon Surprise. Has... She just was here for food. So Devon is also producing partner and uh, co-founder of our new production company. And we work on some projects. So the way we work together is I do a lot of inbound, which is like projects that come to me. Uh, she's more in uh, outbound, I'm, which is like creating stuff and we go out with it. David, this is a perfect place for romance. You are officially the third wheel. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. So for our next film, our feature film, it's about, uh, it is about sobriety. It's about uh, us, basically, our, our real life story about having a second chance at love because of recovery. And so that's where we want to actually attract those people who have people who have addiction or recovery issues to shoot a short to shoot a full feature film like this because i think we need more we can't be afraid to shoot films about alcoholism yes. but we can do it in a fun way that makes people laugh that is like yeah. lighthearted, about love you that's know. challenging it is challenging but on a topic that's pretty dense and but too. i was going to say what makes challenging is that there's many levels of rock bottom that people think about when it comes to alcoholism or going into recovery. People think of the rock bottom of rock bottom, like under a cave, homeless, everything. We're not talking about that. We're just talking about like, I lose my love in my life because I'm drinking too much and my recovery process that way and trying to become a better man, you know? Like, so it's, it's different. There's many levels of it, you know? Yeah. Um, so we want to make it more commercial, but like very appealing, but like, that will take specific investors. Yeah. Kind of like with my beverage, certain investors that love sobriety want to see it out there, especially in the Asian community, right? Like sobriety and not drinking and mental health is so taboo. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We were just out with a friend of ours last night. He was pressuring, he's from Malaysia. He was pressuring me to drink like we're in high school. But they, he doesn't know what sobriety is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we eat this? It's not a thing. Yeah, salad, oh, okay. please. Do you yeah. want to tell us what this is, David? Oh, this is, uh, oh, I, w I would not be, uh, not be the person. So you think in your life you would never touch alcohol again? Never. never. My life is so much better without it. It's better off without it. Gotcha. Yeah. My life. How about like mushrooms or any of that? Mm, you know, I'm, I'm very interested in the psychedelic realm. Yeah. But not for me to personally use. Okay. It's actually for people that are struggling to not do yeah. drugs and alcohol. Right, right, right. I'm right, very right. interested in. Yeah. Because I know it helps. Yeah. I know ayahuasca helps. Yeah. Would it help me even though I've gotten what I have? I don't know. But most likely, 
It'll either do nothing or it'll do worse. I know that much for sure. I just think psychedelics are such a new thing that I'm not really willing to risk it yet. You know? I'm here, since we're talking about rekindling, how have the relationship changed and how have Kevin changed or how have Devon changed? It's very challenging to, it's almost meeting someone new again in a way. There's a new person and, you know, how, how, how's that story like? Because I'm me in recovery, I know I've changed, but you don't know if the other person can tell. Um, I know my voice has changed. Your voice has changed. I know right. it's my voice. It sounds really weird, but when I first got sober, the first six months, my family all told me, you sound good. You sound better. And I was like, oh, yeah, as it goes, I'm talking. No, no. They're like, no, your voice changed. Like, wow. it sounds different, you know? Not to get all religious, but I had a friend that was like, uh, it's very much a God person, you know, like in, in, a, in as an actor, like you believe God is the reason why we're here. He's an art, you know, everything, every choice. And he told me, you now sound like you have God in your voice. That's what he told me. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah. So my voice changed. So I know that's changed, but she might not like this new me. You know what I mean? Like, so I was unsure if she really was. Well, um, the first time around, like Kevin and I got together for, and stayed together for like nine months. You know, it was so beautiful. Like, I still remember, like, just perfect, you know? When it's good, it's good. Perfect. No, like, perfect, meaning like, you know, it's, it's great. It's, you're, you're like, you're compatible. We laugh, you know. Like this is when you guys just met. Yeah, yeah. Like, how much can you, you know, like want for in a in someone who's like a newly yeah. a interest, love interest, right? Right. You laugh right. together. You go to museums. You like don't need expensive meals. Uh, you can just literally talk about like you know taking a poop or something. You know. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And but just, that's like, good. Yeah. You know, if you need yeah. good food and all this to be happy, then you, the relationship already has challenges. Yeah. But oh, yeah. we never dreamed of eating at places like no, that. never. We were starving artists. We like, it, was, where were you guys? In, you said New York. In New York yeah. yeah. I had a, a small kitchen. Like I'm such a big cook, but like literally, I can't even cook for Kevin because it's just like I had a roommate. Like people were Airbnb like my second uh, apartment bedroom, and it was just. People will be stealing food. Like, I just, <laughs> you know, don't feel safe. Like, <laughs> yeah, I didn't even know she cooked until later. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. How long ago was this? This was uh, eight years ago. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I always, like, held that part dear to my heart because I know that connection, that child childhood uh, kind of innocence, that you don't need money, you don't need anything, like, grand to be happy. I had it with Kevin. I didn't really have it with anybody else, you know, which is the crazy part because you think that it would have come easy, but it doesn't. The feeling of liking someone without having any yeah, other, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. just being the person himself. I remember one night just crying when he was like, when I was next to him, I just knew that it was over. Like I had to let it go. Like he just had to, cause this guy, like he's so awesome one minute. And then the next minute with a drink, he would be like a belligerent, like jealous fool. Like yeah. that's how I could put it, you know? Yeah. And uh, I just couldn't handle the uh, ups and downs of my feelings. Like he literally could turn on me like this. Yeah. That's, that's hurtful. Yeah. It's almost like. It's hurtful. It's weird to say this, but like, I think a lot of people don't understand when you're in alcoholism, you're very impulsive. That impulses start to slow down a little bit more with the longer you get sober, though. So you can start to think before you speak a little bit. I'm not saying you're great. I'm great at it, but it, it becomes better. But it's like, literally, I do feel like Dr. Jekyll and Dr. Hyde when, when I was struggling through all of that. And she saw all of it. I mean, she's seen the worst of my apartments. You know, uh, she's seen my temper. She's seen me struggling to try to get sober. Oh, ooh. Oh, wow. That What's this? What is this that? This is our, eight, or our Wagyu box. And three, two, one. Go. Wow. Is that enough? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. So that's, that's, that's crazy, too. And then how would you see the transition now? 
Yeah, well, I can definitely sense his calmness, his confidence. Like, I think he's more um, uh, emotionally connected, but the difference is he's able to express it in a nonviolent way. Eight years ago, I would walk him to to AA to his AA meeting. So that was, oh, he was already uh, Kevin's already like yes. let me fix the situation. Started. Just started. Just started. in order to fix the relationship. In the beginning, it was to fix the relationship, but that's the reason why it didn't last. Because it was for the relationship. Yeah. And then when the relationship ended, uh, it, I, I wasn't sure if I was going to stay. But actually, the moment the relationship ended, I knew I need to. Like, I was like, this is it. This is the last time I ever want to experience something like this in my life. I'm becoming a grown-ass man. I'm a little bit too old to be, like, talking this way to women or ruining relationships this late in the game. I need to get my life back together. Like, And I caught it around, what, what was I, 34? Three, I guess? 32, 33. You know, somebody told me, this is what really hit me, because I've just been miserable for so many years, ups and downs. They said, what if this could spare you the next 10 years of misery? Yeah. And that's what got me. Because I was like, if you could spare me 10 years of misery, I'm in. It's crazy that, you know, at the time, relationships, relationships can end for two or different reasons. And you guys reconnect. And it's almost like it had to happen for you to have the growth. So it's never, there's a reason. It must be painful at the time for both parties. Wow. Uh, never, nine years later. It's wild. It's painful. Um, but, you know, knowing that it's such a slim chance of, of us getting back together. Because we literally didn't talk for, you know, however long we were apart. Um, Seven years. But, you know, secretly. You guys didn't talk at all. No, nothing. Not, not even in contact. Thing. That's how much it hurt. But the fact that um, I knew I had a special connection with him, I knew he was special. Like, I, I just knew that he had like a star quality about him. I knew that he was going to make a change. I knew that ever since the beginning. The cool part is like, wow, like we were actually able to have the second chance. You know? Totally put that yeah. on. The yeah, you can get started. Yeah. Dude, you are an inspiration too, man. Like, seriously, Philly boy, ripped. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm trying I'm, I got I got to take some lessons from you. I mean, you should show off your lifestyle, man. You should show off your body more, your 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 success here, dude. It's it's like something we need more of. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We do. And my my thing is there's a difference between I think showing off and being an example, right? Like I feel like there's too many show-offs, but like when I share a lot of things, I'm I'm here to inspire you. I'm not here to make yeah. you feel less than. I'm here to be like Yo, I came from even probably less than you. Yeah. Like, we can yeah. do this. And if you came from less than me, yeah. just know that I'm not here to be like, well, who came from less? It's more like, hey, look, you can do this. Yeah. You know? The journey of growth. Totally. That's all it is. If you're comparing yourself with other people. Yeah. When I do it, I'm not here to like get people to be like, God damn, I wish I was you with that, Thank you know, you. hottie, badass girlfriend or that, you know, apartment or that show. It's like, no, I'm here to show you, like, you can do it if you do the right things, stay sober or not stay sober, whatever, have faith and do the right actions, you know? Yeah. How does it feel at the time, like, in, let's say in Bling Empire, like there's just the, the, the wealth difference, right, of those around you? You know, in the beginning, I was a little resentful with all the wealth difference because I'm like, guys, you do know I split a bedroom with two other roommates and I don't have a car and you're flaunting your necklaces and cars and thinking by me all these clothes is going to make me feel like welcome and actually like it's kind of crazy in the beginning but it doesn't make me feel like good because i'm like you could have invested that in me or something or yeah. owned it out right or yeah. donated what and what do you need more of that so i grew a resentment but i realized these people are not smarter than us they're actually probably not as smart they just got lucky, man. You know, like they have rich families. Yeah. What, do you think, what about money? happiness? Fulfillment? Probably even less than us. Uh, because I'll tell you this. You know this. If you get success way too early and easily, you don't appreciate it. They don't appreciate their cars or their wealth anyway. Because they've had it since they were kids. Yeah. So I don't think there's any happiness for a lot of them. That's why you see a lot of them depressed living by themselves lonely you know like having they got to be on a reality show half the time you know um but some people do for i think charitable reasons too though so i'm not saying that's everybody but it's like yeah 
Some other ones do it because they want to uh, show off their charities and again, a positive light. Like they want to be a part of this Asian movement going on. You know, yeah. there are some of them, but there are some that just really just want to spend money and flaunt and that's fine. But it didn't make me feel like shit in a while. So I'm like, yeah. no one's giving me anything. Yeah. No that's one's a- even investing, you know, yeah. even when they say they're going to invest. Yeah. It's hard to balance friendship and business. It's hard to balance relationship and business, yeah. which to me is amazing. Like, I want to hear more about that because in my life, in my, my ex-girlfriend, like, we did business together when it was a business that I relied on. It's not, you know, that was, it was my livelihood. It was very challenging because the business is very personal to me. Like, how do you guys deal with that as you guys are building your babies? Yeah, we actually decided we have to treat it like a business now. Because like before we thought because we live together, we are always seeing each other that We'll just get to it eventually, you know, all of these problems or trying to work on our projects together or, hey, you know, you should talk to this person or go out and do these. We thought it would just happen naturally, but it didn't. So we, we started treating it like a business. And I think our relationship got better recently really? from it. Yeah, yeah. No, you guys never argue. Oh, we argued all the time for a little bit, for, for a short period of time. I'm sorry. Yeah. For a short period of time, it seemed like we argued all the time. But it's because we weren't communicating. We weren't being able to share things after a while. Like there were things on my mind and thinking we'd get to it for like two months where it could have been, oh, let's just talk about it in our weekly meeting. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was like crazy how fast that changed things. And now we can be like, okay, we put these things like boundaries on ourselves, you know, but we only found out through arguments like, Okay, after 10 o'clock, we're not talking about anything serious. Your current girlfriend works for marketing, right? So we recently started like a pho project together to create Wagyu pho, elevating her Vietnamese cuisine. Like she, her family always cooked that. That's why I asked you guys, like, it's challenging to work together because then we end up talking about work all the time. Then I'm like, I, maybe we, it's not healthy. We want it. Well, what's, you know, what's your balance like? And it's not easy to work There's together. There's definitely a cutoff point. You yeah. have to, because otherwise, like you said, David. You become like business partners. Business partners. And no longer the girlfriend yeah. I love and spending quality time, exactly. right? So it's got to be a balance. Yeah, there has to be a balance. Like, be in it enough uh, so you can still see each other as sexy. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and you guys live together. We live together. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So there's uh, whatever works for you. Like, maybe kind of pinpoint where the trouble spots are. And like, Kevin and I, we don't talk after, like, we mentioned earlier after 10. That's know. the rule you guys said. Oh, we yeah. found from personal experience. Yeah, that's from personal it's experience. not good for us. Always and good. yeah, real fast. What's not good for you guys? Like not discussing. Talking, anything. Discussion. Uh, after 10 o'clock. After 10, 10 o'clock. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. It's always ugly. Yeah. Because I think, you know, at that point, the mask is off. Like whatever yeah. tolerance that you have. We're tired from the day. Yeah. You're frustrated already. Oh, yeah. Work There's is stressful. So then just things. Yeah. Ready for bed. Already yeah. agitated because you're ready for bed. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but also too, I think other boundaries we have are, you know, like she's got her morning. I got my morning thing. We do, you know. She lets me go to my meetings that I need to for recovery. She does her own routines. Uh, never forced her to do my thing. She never forces me to put on makeup. You know, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Our last piece is so good. All from different parts of the world. That's Wagyu. amazing. From the world? Wow. Delicious. Australian. Come it's a long way, my friend. Got the immigration paper. <laughs> Do we have more of that? Yeah. Well, if you can choose to live forever, you guys will live forever? I don't think I would. You would? Really? Well, I would, depending on which state I'm in. <laughs> oh, no, you stay young. I'm I mean, stay healthy, young, yeah. Full and healthy. Wow, I might want it. Like, if you can choose to continue to look like this. I yeah. definitely want to, yeah. The problem with if you could live forever is that even time and space isn't forever. So eventually you will sure. turn into whatever it is. Sure. So I think I'd want to live to like a million years. That's great. That's forever in yeah, my yeah, sense. Yeah. yeah. But no, no, I mean, like, forever is even trillions of years from now, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what great. What are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> like, to me, I think if I lived a billion years, I'd be bored. 
you know what I would do if I was really going to live up to a million? Like, I would literally probably stop working so hard, invest in, like, I don't know, 3% return bond or, or whatever every year. Just wait. Just wait it out. A complete different game. Yeah. Totally. Because then eventually you're going to become a billionaire. Even. Yeah, yeah. You just you wait. Know? You just wait. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. No, this matches my shirt. Holy cow. Look at that. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> Holy cow. That's a good one. Oh, the, oh, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. I didn't understand it. I was like, what? <laughs> A tomahawk is coming. This is just another dish. Wait, what? Yeah. That's not the tomahawk? Yeah. Oh, shit. I thought this yeah. was the tomahawk and you're going to put it on there. The tomahawk is coming. I love this place. I love doing podcasts. Well, Over food, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Way more food when you do a podcast here. You literally set the bar so high. That you're like, we're, we're going to hate our podcast from here on out. Yeah, man. It's like weird. It's like with that bridge... It's all about how many you can sell, just yeah. because it's such little. But this market. is the alternative market. Is definitely this is up and coming. Up and coming. The entire industry is so big. I know. I myself don't drink as much. Do you ever feel pressure to drink around investors or people like that? I feel pressure to drink on certain occasions where I feel like if everyone's drinking, then yeah, it's yeah. it's challenge. It's more challenging for sure. If I'm trying to stay sober 100, percent I think it's challenging. Yeah. Do people ever talk to you about it and say? Why aren't you drinking then? And that makes you feel uncomfortable. They, if I told them I have like you know in your situation, I think they would probably understand more. Please. But because I'm not, I didn't explain that situation. And in Chinese culture, like it's probably pretty like in general, people drink so much. That's what I thought. Yeah. Just, or in uh, Korean culture, or in yeah. A friend is Chinese that came yesterday, and yeah. he doesn't. He always makes fun of me about it. Yeah. But I think it's part of a joke now at this point. Yeah, yeah. But like yeah. I think too. He's somewhat serious. Like you just yeah. don't. But it's not, not a thing. Like what you said about like earlier, it's not a thing in China about depression, about addiction, sobriety. What's a healthy lifestyle? People smoke all the time. All the time. It's just a culture. Yeah. But I think that's why it's so important to talk about it more. Like make it very obvious that people are people do struggle even in China. Absolutely. Addiction that there can be help. There are people that are forced to drink every day because it's for business. Right, right it's like, exactly. And now it's adding into work. Like that's just part of your job. It's so crazy. But there's something that I, I always said to them is that they're like, oh, but your mindset should be stronger that you don't, when you drink, you can control it. I actually said, I think it takes a stronger mindset to say no to you. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You know what I mean? It's Absolutely. like, I don't know. Like, you just... the, the harder path is definitely not drinking. It's not drinking. 100%. Right? Yeah. As someone who drinks casually sometimes once in a while, yeah. It's uh, hard. It was just weird. I just had... You're, I... you're essentially choosing to you still socialize, which is very hard because the people that don't like to drink end up, a lot of friends that don't drink, they don't want to socialize. It's almost like a correlated thing. Right. I don't want to go party. I don't want to meet people. I'm going to go be at home. You know, I'm, I'm dating and I have my wife and I just stay home. I don't want to drink. good for me. <laughs> but no, we love both. We love yeah. socializing. We love talking But at socializing, it's hard. Like to not have any substance, right? I think that's, there, it's definitely more challenging to say no. So people feel like they don't have substance yeah. or the confidence to talk to people. I feel it's that very way. low. Yeah. Like before I got sober. I'd say that. Yeah. But now uh, you've got no problem. Oh my yeah. God, she actually told me she didn't know I was this chatty. I was like, really? I didn't talk that much when we... So before, you you felt like it was different. I didn't talk anymore. You required alcohol to be like more... And a lot of people do, like to be social. To even go on a date, you need to be like on alcohol, right? Too. Yeah. 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 I'm like, really, Kevin? You you want alcohol so you could <laughs> a little more talk? You're, you're not that quiet. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I... I think now I still talk a lot more than I did back then, which is kind of weird. I always thought I talked a lot. Uh, <laughs> always? No. No, no I not. guess like even when he, okay, so this is the Kevin, like when he drinks back then, he, he thinks he's funny, but he's really not. <laughs> Why do people <laughs> laugh? Do they feel bad for you? Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. I have a lot of people that feel bad for me. You're saying like they're laughing, like uh, not with you when you're drunk. Oh, but this is back then you're talking about. Yeah, this is back then, babe. Oh, okay. yeah. So I'm funny now. <laughs> you're definitely uh, uh, more funny now. More funny now, okay. But she it's also, more genuine. 
Do you think you, there was part of it drinking, like to like to find your significant other, to find love? Drinking was oh, process for that. One hundred percent. That was my reason for drinking. Yeah. Like that's what I thought would get me that. Yeah. Or get me to a place where to find love. Find love, or like the girls only liked me because I was fun when I was drinking, yeah. or I could provide drinking access to them. But little did I know that wasn't true at all. Like she didn't, Devon didn't even know that I drank as much as I did. Yeah. A lot of people oh, even in today's society, like it's hard to have sober sex. Like they don't, Rich, they don't know how to behave until oh, they yeah. need alcohol. It's Yo, a tendency, I, right? I remember too. that when I was uh, 22 on, when I lost my virginity, like I can't remember how many times I had sober sex. Like it was right. weird. You know, it's not a thing. I'm like I was such an insecure this, yeah. college kid anyway that to have sober sex was mind boggling to me. Yeah. You know, although when I lost my virginity, I was sober, but it was like it, not many times afterwards, you know? Yeah. Because but, like, just don't feel secure about yourself. I think that's so hard. That's why, especially young adults, like in college, you know, people that may be watching. Yeah, it's very challenging for them to not drink because you have fraternities of all this, and it just become this only way you know how to socialize with the opposite sex or socialize in general is through alcohol, right. or else you cannot have genuine conversations. Right. I think that's something that's why it's so much harder, more difficult to choose to be sober and socialize mm -hmm. and meet people and create connections and have romance without alcohol. I think that's that's challenging. We, it's right. there's got to be some education on there, so teaching the next generation how to do that. You don't eat your restaurant food every time you visit, do you? No, no, no. When I eat here, I pay too. Because I really? have investors. Yeah, so I, you know, I've experienced, yeah. I get a discount as a, you know, manager and owner. Yeah. Wow. Oh. So we have it better as influencers. <laughs> <laughs> Way better. What? Holy shit. Only influencers get comp. So this dinner's comp. Because wow. we're making some show. So thank you guys for coming. I yeah. get for free. They, David's like, I get to eat for free today. It's the only... That's, can we find out later? That's really the only reason why so David funny. ever does podcasting. Yes. yes. <laughs> it's because he found a part loophole. of it. <laughs> it's like, yes. You can ask your That's girlfriend, smart. let's shoot a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Now, this is about 58 <laughs> ounces, and this is actually a full breed of Wagyu. Uh, Kevin, if you, if you give me a feedback later on how you're hungry after this. Oh my. God. And after this, we'll start the second half of your meal, okay? Wait, what? <laughs> oh my God, okay, all right, all right. What is that, too? All right, now we're gonna go ahead and hook this up for you. What the fuck? I've never so seen anything like that. Tomahawk ritual for this you. This is a ritual. Oh my God. It's holy cow. Holy cow. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> now we're going to be pouring a little bit of bourbon right on top. Wow. A little bit of bourbon and fire makes everything better, right? Ooh. Wow. Oh my god. We're going to give it one last glaze of flavor. So oh, really, we're going to be activating our little salt bowl down here with a bunch of herbs, a little bit of sage, thyme, rosemary. That's what I was wondering. Okay. That's all salt? Salt and herbs. And then mix them with a little bit of that bourbon to give it that glaze effect. And that's going to be searing that flavor right on top. Jesus, I've been spanked with paddles smaller than that. <laughs> How much is this whole meal? Normally per person, if it's like this. Uh, I would say per person, you're looking at around like 350-ish. Okay. That's not including alcohol. Not including alcohol. You know, I got to tell you. That's actually pretty yeah. reasonable yeah. for what you get. Yeah. Remember when we were here for the first one? Everybody was trying to guess how much it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some yeah. people were saying 1200 Yeah, yeah. I said 500 yeah. and it was still less. Yeah. I was shocked. Yeah. But is that what makes it unique too? Yeah, So you can keep absolutely. the price lower? Because this is our own, our own cattle ranch. Wow. In California, Oregon. Is it this one from our own cattle ranch? Correct. Yeah. Um, Oregon from Asami Ranch. Oh my God. And then strawberry. And uh, so we're going to be putting this you. right on top of our Himalayan pink salt stone block as well. We're going to be deboning this right off the bone for you all. Get out. Thank you. Get out. Show this to me. <laughs> I want a bone. We're going to be making three cuts for you all today. 
So the first one is just to get this top edge off. It is the fattiest part in here, so we like to go ahead and trim that first. The second and third cut is going to be this outer edge. This has the most flavor in this entire piece of meat. So we like to separate it so you can enjoy it to its fullest extent. Can I tell you what we used to eat Please. when we were struggling? Well, we still... I want to, we'll just say we're artists now, but back then we were dreamers. Dreamers, yeah. Just the beginning of being a dreamer. We'd go to a ramen shop and split a bowl of ramen for our date. That was, that was what we did. Yeah. No. Yeah. We split everything. We split everything. I think a lot of restaurants would not. What like is that us. portion like? So when you say splitting, I'm assuming uh, <laughs> it's like an 80 20 split. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> you got one bite. It's actually true, actually. <laughs> you want the bra? <laughs> We'd even go to this place that was like French and just get macaroni and bread. That's beautiful. Yeah. Though. That's true love. Everybody who I meet now will only know me from the show. Or if they don't, they're going to watch it. And then they're going to have a different perception anyway. Whereas like the one person that in unfortunate circumstance knew me and wanted to be with me, even when all we could do was have a bowl of macaroni and cheese and order free bread like we ordered like three or four orders of that's beautiful free bread <laughs> and the way we made it more filling was we put butter <laughs> the free butter into the macaroni and cheese <laughs> oh, you guys are happy yeah i was so happy it was like 18 buck day that was it yeah so cool but like it's so weird to look at this and be like wow look what we get to do now yeah, it's wild. So to answer your question, like, yeah, Bling did, did good, but it's just a weird different type of success, I guess, you know? Yeah, Bling's the first Asian reality yeah. TV show I can think of. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. It's crazy that, yeah, yeah. every in genre that we got, we're making a strides in every genre. That's great. Mm -hmm. totally. And we were just discussing this the other day. It's like, you know, uh, the reason why I went all in on career in the U.S. because like, you know, you don't want to, this is a different kind of um, struggle when you when you make it overseas and then you come here and then you don't understand the culture. They're still, they, they're still missing that swag that they'll never get. That's why people don't care. Like the people here don't really care about um, a successful artist or actors um, overseas. International. Yeah, international. Yeah. It's like they will never make it here. Yeah. It, it very rarely, I would say. You know, but Kevin. Yeah, you can dip in whatever sauce oh, yeah. you like. Yeah. But you know, like yeah. Kevin, I'm so glad. I was telling him, like, I'm so glad. You know, things didn't work out for you in Malaysia because even if you make it there, you're gonna stay there for the rest of your life. There's just no way with that lifestyle, everything you have in there. Like, and then you're gonna dream about coming back to where you're from. Forget about it. Interesting. It's gonna wow. be a struggle. You want to make it here because when you make it in Hollywood. You literally will always be known as, oh my God, that's Kevin in Hollywood. Like he's, he's an Asian star. He's from the U.S. and he's from Hollywood. Everybody would die over that, you know? Would you, I mean, I, I guess this is like the NBA, right? This yes. in Hollywood is where Hollywood it matters. Is where it's at. Yeah. New York, LA, you know? Yeah. Basically. Then if you're, you get, if you're, you make it here, then you can make it anywhere, anywhere. literally. Yeah. yeah. By People the song. Say that okay. For a reason, you know. Yeah. So many people try to break um, the industry from uh, uh, the international stars. Even the Never. Korean actors and yeah. K-pop artists still want to make it here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. True. Much bigger achievement. Much bigger. I'm curious, like, how has fame changed your love life, though? Well, you know, it's 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 weird because right before Devon and I got back together, I I was really okay with being single because I was just like, you know what? I don't really like the girls that much here. Um, and the ones that come to me seem to be a little bit like, a little bit too crazy about me on the show, but not me as a real person. But do you, would you say that because you were on the show? Exactly. You got a lot more love interest. The oh, fame has- 100% like way more. Like I was shocked like how much more. I was like, I knew famous people got more options, but I didn't realize how much more it was like insane so like literally though i said I don't, I don't really know if i like this path the way it's going and i i really remember saying i'm gonna stay focused uh 
you know, obviously there's distractions at points, but you get focused again and you're like, this isn't really yeah. what I thought it was going to be. Yeah. I'm over it. Like, yeah. this is not what I came here for. Yeah. This is not what I want to be known for. Yeah. And um, it's made my relationship with the mind stronger because, like, I just, I'm more careful with that relationship now. Like, before I wasn't as careful, I'd say, back when, eight years ago. Um, but now I'm a lot more careful with it. Because of that, because of fame in a way. Yeah, exactly. Because I'm like, you know what? The things I do and say can hurt her more. Uh, when comes, eyes on you, essentially. Right. Or even yeah. like when it comes to other girls, right? Yeah. Like what I say or do to them could affect Devon in yeah. a negative way or yeah. a positive. You never know. Because before just, it won't get out there, but now it's everyone would know. Right. Exactly. Potential. Exactly. And so that's why I'm more careful, more careful about the people I interact with, who uh, I interact with on social media even. In real life, yeah, uh, with the mod, it's just it's more like you know, trying to be as more like transparent about things as possible. Yeah. Um, back then, I didn't feel like I had to be that transparent just because there was really nothing. Yeah. You know. So I think that's something I appreciate um, back then and even now that we have like the fame of playing and um, the recognition of. Oh my God, how are we going to navigate? Is it more hard because, you know, people are going to try to destroy our relationship? Well, you know, that's, that's for you to say, uh, for you to build and for you to set that boundary for yourself. And like I said, it, it helps so much to kind of just talk. Like sometimes I see Kevin as like a friend. Yeah. You know, I'm like, how do you feel about this? You know, like, yeah. how do you think our relationship is going? Like, and how do we strengthen it? Like, is this what we want? You know, yeah. it just. Has there a time where fame has come in between the relationship, where you get it more challenging? Like, because I would imagine if I'm famous, you know, they're just more, like you said, the eyes watching and then more temptations. But in being in Hollywood and being, in, you know, under the spotlight and also having, like you said, a lot, you know, the fame has changed, the amount of love interest. Has that come in? I know this is funny, but like, we've always expected this <laughs> in a way, like, even back then, like, you know, I'm just proud of him. I'm like, yeah, like girls love Kevin. Like, that's what we want, you know? Yeah. Like, and like, if guys are DMing me, that's what yeah. I want, you yeah. know? Like, but it, to us, it's not, it's not like, oh, you know, like I'm going to get with this person or it's yeah. more of like a, I should say like a, a, a stamp of success. Yeah. More than anything. So I think, I think it's amazing to see you guys before and see you guys now. That you guys really are the yin and yang in certain ways. I can see that. You know, you yeah. guys have different talents. and I love dessert. You know? He doesn't care for them. You know, you take 90% of the food and you take 10. You know, it's, per you know. Love it. I eat what she doesn't eat. Yeah. Both like leftovers. That's amazing. I actually have a leftover test. Like, what's that? For any single guys out there, I'd say that if you can't have a girl enjoy the leftovers of food that you have in your fridge at any point, right? You could be out there. Interesting. Lunch, I think she's not a keeper. <laughs> you mean if, if they don't know how to eat leftover, they can only yeah. eat fresh fruit or right. have a standard then they, or they're like, Hey, they, no order, order takeout right now. Yeah. Or take me out. Yeah. Or how dare you give me, have leftover. you met people like that? Oh yeah. Really? That's, that's how I'm giving you a leftover test right now. Really? So there are people, wow. I don't think I know people that don't eat leftover. That's crazy. That's but no, I thought that was pretty crazy. It's like, <laughs> you know, like, but by the way, I mean, look, I understand sometimes it's too early for some people. Might as well find out earlier than later, you know, like, yeah, that's funny. That's interesting. Yeah. I think by the third date, if they can't take leftover food from you, yeah. too high maintenance. Yeah. Wow, you went after those kind of girls? No, I'm just saying. Like, I just discovered that. We're taking this home, man. Oh, yeah, ah, we are. We are. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But keep that for the visual background. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Appreciate That's a good test. The no, leftover, I think I call the it leftover the left, test. Leftover test. I like it. I'm telling you. If you can't have a girl that enjoys leftovers, you're going to have a very expensive upkeep. Yeah. What is this? Ube? That is our lavender garden cake. This was our triple chocolate dough with a lemon yuzu sorbet and a matcha ice cream. That's a great presentation. It's like you're almost rapping for us. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I want to say, um, 
I heard about you after you had died here the first time. My wife actually loved you. So oh, I hope she likes better. you better. <laughs> okay. I'm actually really full now, babe. Yeah. Wow. I'm full. I'm very happy to hear that. Yeah. 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 I'm shocked. Actually, I just learned from our, our friend from uh, Malaysia that he ordered so much food because in culture, he's like, you don't want right all the food or else it's considered you didn't order enough and you were a bad host. That's bad. Yeah. So you see, I didn't know that. I just ate all the food because I'm like, oh, it must be rude not to eat all the food. <laughs> and you're dying. So you're like, yeah. he's like, he's got to order more. So in his head, he's like, oh, unhealthy shit. cycle. In his head, he's like, oh, shit, I got to order more. I didn't order more. And then he don't order more. I can eat all of it. He's like, shit, he finished it. He's like, oh, we got to order more. <laughs> and this whole time, I thought I was finishing it thinking. So I was to be nice. Polite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's an like, American thing to be nice, to finish your food, or else it's like that polite. And he's like, no, I keep ordering food because you keep finishing it. I'm like, shit, he finished it. That's true. That's true. But he would order so much. And I, yeah, it's Asian culture. You got to over order American culture to finish the food so it's polite. Yeah. yeah. So we made a joke. It's like, okay, this time we left like a little sliver of noodle left. Finished almost everything but noodle. No, in my old days, like right now, this is me holding back a little bit. Really? I'm trying, I'm trying to diet for this movie, right? But that would have been gone. If you're not dieting. If I'm not dieting. Really? Easily. Yeah. That's insane to me. Yeah. To me, for me to finish this, I gotta throw up. Just do a different body type. It's crazy. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 definitely. But dude, I mean, what are you, 140? I'm like 155. 155? Yeah. I mean, don't forget, I'm like 190. Yeah. Maybe 192, but like... Not for this holy cow. Yeah, yeah, after, yeah. Maybe 195, <laughs> But like, that's a lot more weight, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm just similar height, so it's 40 similar pounds, height. 50 pounds on me almost. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm literally trying to diet down more right now to like, by doing a little bit more cardio, watching my carbs a little bit more, but lifting and staying on the schedule. I mean, I've lost quite a bit, but it's like, dude, that would. And you said you were in fitness before. Oh, yeah. You were like training people. And bodybuilding. Wow. Yeah, natural bodybuilder. So you understand that like very well, what it takes to just calorie intake. Totally. Like probably the last two weeks before I have to go on set, I'll be very strict with what I eat for a little bit. So you look, so you look cut. Yeah. More cut. More like, cut. No That's what they care about is cut. Yes. It's all I care about is being cut. You want a hot body. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to be soft or big. You want to be cut. Like you, you're cut and lean. I would rather look that, like that than be fluffy. It doesn't look good on camera. Has that always ch ever changed? Like beauty standard for women has changed, but how about for men? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think for me, though, it's just like for me, I just think I look better, a little bit more cut. Yeah. Right? Than fluffy on TV. Right, film. Right, yeah. right. I would have done it for you on the show, but I didn't have enough time. What's the favorite thing you've acted on right now to date? Oh, I mean, it's definitely this movie I just did called Asian Persuasion. Okay. It's going to be out hopefully, I, I believe, in December this year, but we okay. shot it last Asian year. Asian Persuasion. Yeah, it's an Asian rom com, full feature. We shot it last year. It's going to be out a year later in December. Yeah. 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 It's this is crazy. It takes time. But also, too, it's already finished, but now it's going through a film festival route, a uh, theatrical release in the Philippines. So it takes a little bit of a while. Yeah. Okay, okay. But, um, you know, great, good actors, legends that I've always known since I was a kid. I got to play, like, an actual lead, which is cool. And I'm like, wow, an actual scripted thing that I could use what I know to do. If I actually looked back on it a little bit more, I probably would have, and this, like, it's just me now, hindsight. I probably would have gotten uh, a little bit more professional help on it. On the acting side. Yeah, yeah. Because, like, really, like, this was kind of an easier role because it was, like, really just me. Yeah. But, like, I think if I were to do it again, I would have gotten more uh, a, little bit, a little bit more training to brush up on it. Yeah. Because, like, I just went back to a class recently just for audition technique. And I'm like, oh, shit, I forgot about all that stuff. Wow. Like, I think I could have done it a lot more freer um, than I did before. Even I've taken an acting class before. It's insane. Yeah, right? One time in school. Oh, this, yeah. Not for me. I'm like, this is very challenging. Yeah. The small details. It's just like Omakase. It's the small details that I wouldn't understand 
Right. One facial expression, one tiny thing oh that you have to perfect God. on that wow. is crazy. Well, like, especially on camera because, like, the framing. Yeah. Like, don't move out of frame, you know, like. Oh, that I don't even know. Yeah. yeah. For me, it was just like yeah. stage, you know. It was like. You yeah. got to know your close up, if it's a close up or if it's like a long shot, then you know you have freedom or. If it's a long shot, then you have to like project a little bit more. Like you don't know all that stuff until you're in it, you know? Yeah. But yeah. Th that's the beauty of having a director too. They'll tell you. Yeah. They'll direct you. But when you audition, you just don't know. Yeah. Cool. All right, man. Should we wrap that up? Yes. Let me go. And wrap up. that up. Yes. Thank you guys. It's a wrap.